Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Deepak Stack, where we are learning the Azure API management and Power Apps and Power Automate. In today's video, we are going to publish an currency conversion API to the APIM and going to consume that API into a Power App. So stay tuned. If you have not watched my previous video of the series, I would highly recommend you to go back and watch those video because on those video, I have already discussed what is APIM and how you can start with it. Now, if you already know that, that's good. So today we are going to use an external API that is for currency conversion. We are going to publish that API using the blank API option of APIM and then exporting that API as in custom connector and using it to the Power Apps, okay? So to start with, you need to understand few basic about an API, okay? So to start with any external API, when you subscribe for that API, you will get all of these different information. You will get the URL of your API, what all operations that API providing you, the method related to that operation, API header, if that API required you to pass any specific header, any query parameter. So if your API required a query parameter, any request body schema, any specific request body that is required you to complete that particular operations, and what is going to be the final response from that API. And you need all of this information when you are going to publish any external API to the APIM. So in my case, I have collected all this information. The URL of my API is this. Uh, there is no operation, so I'm going with the root. This is the get method. The query parameter, this is where it is asking me what is your function. So my function is currency exchange rate, to currency and from currency, okay? There is no request body required for this API, so I am leaving it empty. And this is how the response is going to be received by an API. So if you have all this information, if not, go ahead, collect this information, and then continue. So I am in my portal.azure.com API management service instance. Go to add API, click on blank API. As soon as you click on this blank API, it's gonna ask you some parameters. The display name of your API. The next, it's going to ask you the web service URL. That's the actual URL of your API. So in my case, this is my web service URL. Now again, if you remember the last video, you know what you need to type in here. So once you give the suffix, this is going to be the URL what every end user or the consumer of this API will see they will not know the actual API for this API, okay? Click on create. As soon as you click on create, your API instance will be created here. Now, as you can see here, this is my demo currency API. It doesn't have any operation yet. Now, when you start from the blank API, it's not going to automatically create operations for you. You have to manually create them as compared to Open API, where all those operations created automatically. Okay, so in my case, if you go back to the information, I don't have a specific operation. So that's only the one operation that I have that's going to give me the currency conversion for those two currency that I will pass. So I'll click on add operation. I'll just give the name get exchange rate. And then it's asking me the URL and the method, right? So as you can see, in my case, it's in GET. If you don't have any operations and you are just calling that API as in root, you just need to provide this. You can add description as you want. There's an optional. And then under, that, under each operation, you can define the query parameter, headers, request body, and response. In my case, I have the headers and I have the query parameter. So let me define the query parameter first. So to define or add a query parameter, click on add parameter, give the name, 
select the type and the default value. So I defined my three query parameters. Now go to the headers. Now listen very carefully this point. You can define a header for each operation if you like to define. In my case, if you see here, this is my consistent header. So irrespective of any operations, I want users or whoever consuming this API to provide this header. Now, in most cases where you are using a third-party API, you will have a subscription key for that API, right? And that you need to pass in the header or in the request when you're calling that API. And that's what you are seeing here. And then a couple of other headers. Now in APIM, what you can define or do, you can create some policies or rules that can apply to all the requests that is coming for that API for any operations or one of the operations. Now, why I'm telling this to you? And why I'm telling this to you? Because if you look at this definition, you don't need every user who is consuming this API or this currency accent API to register for the API and give you the key for the subscription. Instead, I want this header to be a global header for any request that is coming in for, for this API that I'm publishing in APIM. So to do something like that, what you can do, go to the design, Make sure that you are in all operations. If you are creating a global header for all the operations, those are available in this API. You see here, say inbound processing. So let me walk you through how this works. So when you publish an API to the APIM, it gets request response path created. And path I mean to say, this is the front end. Front end means what the consumer of this API will see. Then once they call this operation, it will process to the inbound processing of APIM. Inbound processing is nothing but taking the request from the consumer and passing it to the backend. Now, what you can do in this inbound processing, you can define different policies. So if I click on this small code editor and click on show snippet, you can do all of these different policies in this inbound processing. And in today's case, what we're going to do, we're going to use this set HTTP header. So once we click on that, make sure that it copied under the base of inbound. So what we are saying that whenever I'm going to receive the request from any consumer, I'm going to set those three global header. So end user will not need to provide me subscription key because I'm going to use the subscription key that I already have for the backend API. This header is pretty straightforward. What you need to do, you need to give the name of the header. So this is the name of the header. And then you need to provide the value. And you can define, you can just copy paste multiple time and you can define all of these, these different headers here. Okay, and once you provide all of the header that is required by the API, and once you click save, and you can see here your header has been defined. So, so now from the front end, if I have more than this func this operation, any operation that user is going to call, they're all going to have this header and then pass it to my backend. And then this URL will provide me the response and send it back to the end user. And you can do the same thing for outbound processing. This is where you are receiving the response from the backend API, and then you are passing the information to the end user. So now let's go to the settings. And now if you have seen my previous video, I'm going to uncheck that, click save. And then we will go to the test, click on the get rate, select these different parameters that we have provided and click on send. And you see the response is here. Now, one thing to notice, now if, if I go back and go to the operation and click on edit, I have defined the query header I have defined into the policies. Request, my API doesn't require any request. As you can see, here, it's an empty. <coughs> but I also need to define the response. The response is needed because when I'm going to export this API, as in custom connector for Power Apps or Power Automate, if I don't have the well-defined response, Power Apps will not be able to understand 
the response and then you will not able to use it as smooth as you like to okay so always define response if you are planning to use this in power apps power automate you can still manage without defining the response because you can process the raw response in power automate much easily okay just remember this if you are publishing an api in apim for the power apps define the response okay so i'm going to click on add response and I'm going to select just the success, add a description, and under the representation, click on add representation, and the information, what kind of response you are getting, you will get from your uh, third-party API that you are subscribing with. In my case, it's an application JSON. And then under definition, click on new definition, and then this is what you need to do. You need to copy this response or the sample schema of the response, okay give a name so i'm going to give response and paste it here right and what it's going to do is going to automatically generate the payload and click create definition so now what i did i created a defined response for this api click on save and now we all know we are going to click on these three dots click on export power apps and power automate select the right Teams environment and click on export. And once you log into teams.microsoft.com, if you have your Power Apps app pinned, if not, you can click on these three dots, search for Power Apps, select that. Under build, you will see on the left hand side all these different environments that you have already created for this team. And select the environment where you are <clears throat> going to create this new app and create a new app here so i'm going to give this name here now once the app created uh, let's see if our custom connector is available or not so under the data under add data refresh this connectors so we have this currency exchange rate api that's the api that we have published click on that and we have now our custom connector ready here. And if you see here, this is not premium. As we all know, this is going to be a standard connector. So we can use it without any premium license. Let's drop a label here where we will show the current exchange rate. And then let's add a button that will make a call to this API. Okay. So on click of this button, we are going to call API. Once you click dot, you will start seeing all those different operations that you have created. So our operations was the get, and then all these different query parameters that we have defined. So from currency function, and, and as you can see here, all the default value that we have set it up also showing up here. So I defined my function or my operations provided all of three, the query parameter that my API required. And then if I click after this, now, as you can see here, I'm start seeing the response. This is the call, right? This is the call to my API and I'm getting the response here too. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable, rate, And just whatever response, I'm getting from this API, I'm assigning to this variable, and I will show that variable information in this label, okay? So as you can see here, this was the response that we have defined from currency, all this information, what, what we need, we need exchange rate. Now let's review this app, click on that button, and now as you can see, it's making the call to the API, and then here you go you got the response. Now let's see if you want to change this. So instead of INR, I will say, let's do the pound conversion. Pound code there and click preview and run it. So now I have the currency conversion from dollar to pound. This is how easy it is. So we created an API using blank API option for an external API. We exported that API for Power Apps. And now you have that custom connector available for just not for this app but any other app 
that we will be creating under this environment. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And in next video, we're going to take this to another level. We are going to create an API for Azure Cognitive Service using Logic Apps. So stay tuned.